Good day, everybody. This is Joe. Well, we were down by the Rio Grande today, and I was telling my wife a story because we have a moth infestation this time of year. It's not a it's not an annual event. It's once every seven to ten years, but I guess it's a slow enough news cycle, and there's enough news outlets and enough demand for stories that something like this makes the national news. But anyway, Albuquerque has a moth infestation, or central New Mexico does. Anyways, anytime I think about moths, I'm reminded of a story that my brother's first wife told. When she was growing up as a girl, she had a younger sister who couldn't pronounce the word moth, and instead would say the word fa, like, look, a fa, a fa. And so my brother's wife told us this story back in the 1980s. That story kind of became my story. I've told that story repeatedly, and now I told the story to my wife, and now she has that story. Interestingly enough, though, her version of the story, though it has the same basic facts as I told them, her version also now includes the fact that I told her that my observation about this was that the story tends to outlive the teller of the story. And that's what I think is fascinating. Is it too soon to say this, that stories are viral in the sense that a biological virus inhabits the cells of its host and uses the reproductive system of those cells to spread. In that same way, stories inhabit humans and humans spread the stories from person to person through various means, various vectors, whether it's oral storytelling tradition, literature, cinema, television, internet media, or any other kind of form of storytelling. We as a species tend to tell stories. It must be endemic to our biology. You go into the caves of France, you see paintings and drawings and carvings or etchings on the walls of the cave that date back tens of thousands of years, and there were people telling stories back then, telling them to us. They didn't know us, but we know a little bit more about them through the agency of those stories that they left for us in a visual form. So this little story of the moth, the fa, the fa, reminds me that stories outlive the storyteller. Your stories can outlive you. The stories we tell, even passively, just of who we are as people, affects other people. Those people pass it on to someone else. So your storytelling will outlive you. That's something amazing to think about and that is something that's also humbling as we sit down to craft our stories. So this reminded me again today when I was thinking about the moths, the fa, the fa. That story has spread and passed along. Maybe the moth was telling the story to that young girl. But it reminds me that there are stories everywhere. I'm reminded of people that like to hunt for photographs in public. You might call them street photographers or whatever. There's a lot of similarity between street photography and the language of street photography, let's say, and hunting. You know, taking the shot stalking the subject and all that. But storytelling is a social phenomenon. Uh, storytelling isn't big game hunting, it's interacting with other people. You have to put yourself in a position where they trust you to tell you their story. And you have to build relationship. And I think there are stories out there. Every one of us personally has a story we can tell. And every one of us has stories of family, close friends, acquaintances, neighbors, and in our community. There are stories out there waiting to be told. And as creatives, 
whether that is with the typewriter, the fountain pen, the computer, or whatever medium you like to use. As creatives who use words, there are a lot of stories out there, and we should take advantage of this time and try to listen for those stories. Remember, that's how you get a story. You listen. Someone has to tell the story to you. So storytelling is a activity, but getting a story, acquiring a story is passive. It is listening. It is not aggressive and outgoing. It is being receptive to someone else, to their situation, their plight, their story. That's what we have to learn to do. As storytellers, we have to be story listeners. And I encourage you guys be a story listener. Listen to your own self. What stories do you have in your life that you've never put down on paper? Or you need to go a little bit further than just a sketch of a note or whatever. What stories are out there for us to find and to tell? That's a good question. I'll leave you that for today. Look for those stories. I'm Joe Van Cleve. Stay well, stay creative, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.